Details of the chase and firefights between Haitian security forces and the alleged assassins of the country's president have begun to emerge. Here's what you need to know. The gunmen who assassinated Haiti's president around 1 a.m. on Wednesday, July 7th, were initially allowed to drive away from the president's house before being met by a massive security services roadblock, according to a report by CNN, citing a source with knowledge of the tracking operation. As the group's convoy of five cars, containing up to 28 assassins, arrived at the roadblock, they fled on foot. Some leaped into a deep roadside drainage canal, others scattered into surrounding buildings. The majority of the assassins took refuge in an empty two-story storefront, which sheltered them from gunfire. And at this point, Haitian security forces decided to wait them out, knowing the humidity, heat, and a lack of drinking water would weaken them. At 3 p.m. the following day, Haitian forces threw three tear gas canisters into the road in front of the shop, and negotiations began via the phone of one of the guards held hostage shortly after. The result of those negotiations was that two of the president's guards held hostage were released, and that two Haitian Americans who say they were working as translators gave themselves up to the security services. Haitian security services later made their way inside the building and a firefight ensued, in which at least three Colombian gunmen were killed. However, the majority of the gunmen had already fled, including one group that had made it to the nearby Taiwanese embassy. The next day, with police having surrounded the embassy, this group of 11 gave themselves up without more fighting. In total, 26 former Colombian soldiers are suspected in the killing, according to the Associated Press. Of these, 23 have been arrested and 3 have been killed. Three Haitians, including the two Haitian Americans who say they were translators, have also been arrested. The third Haitian is Christian Emmanuel Sanon, who Haiti's national police chief Leon Charles has said masterminded the assassination. Sanon is a doctor who had been living in Florida, according to the New York Times. However, according to the New York Times, much skepticism exists within the country around this official account. One anonymous associate of Sanon's has told the Associated Press that Sanon told him he was approached by people claiming to represent the U.S. state and justice departments and they wanted to install him as president. The same source said the plan was for President Moïse to be arrested rather than killed and that Sanon would not have participated if he knew Moïse would be assassinated. Alongside that discussion, there is also the question of the role of the guards around President Moïse. The president's security detail was made up of about 10 men, according to El Pais, and none of them were injured in the attack, according to the Los Angeles Times. What's more, Colombia's national police chief, cited by the Associated Press, has said the head of general security at Haiti's National Palace flew to Colombia, Ecuador, and Panama in the months before the assassination. Colombian police are now investigating whether he had any role in recruiting the mercenaries, while in Haiti, prosecutors are seeking to interrogate Gerard over the assassination. All of these questions exist within the context of a wider political battle, which began well before the assassination of President Moïse. A growing number of politicians have challenged interim Prime Minister Claude Joseph, who has taken charge of Haiti in the wake of the assassination, with backing from police and the military, according to the Associated Press. On Sunday, U.S. officials, including representatives from the U.S. Department of Justice and the Department of Homeland Security, met with Joseph and designated Prime Minister Ariel Henry, who President Moïse had appointed as his replacement just days before his death. Also at the meeting was Joseph Lambert, head of Haiti's dismantled Senate, whom supporters have named as provisional president, according to the White House National Security Council, cited by the Associated Press. Whoever takes power in the country will be faced with huge questions about the events of recent days, as well as questions about the future. Haiti's post-colonial period was summed up by The Guardian as a seemingly endless onslaught of economic strife, foreign intervention and exploitation, venal dictatorship, coup d'etats, corruption, and gang violence, as well as a succession of deadly natural disasters. Indeed, the Encyclopedia Britannica draws various lines between racial and financial disparity in the country today and those foreign interventions over the past 100 years. From 1915 to 1934, for instance, Haiti was occupied by U.S. Marines and many Haitians believed they were sent to protect U.S. investments in the country as well as to establish a base to protect areas around the Panama Canal. Even now, according to Haiti expert Kevin Pina speaking to I-24 News, the matter of who comes out in charge of the country could effectively be decided by whoever gets U.S. backing. Interim Prime Minister Claude Joseph has, according to Pina's Flashpoint News site, long-held ties to the U.S. intelligence community. Keep watching for more details of exactly what happened in the moments before President Moïse was killed. 
There was shocking news out of Haiti early Wednesday morning as it emerged that the country's president had been assassinated. Here's what you need to know. Javonel Moïse, Haiti's president, was assassinated in an attack at his home around 1 a.m. on Wednesday, according to CNN. The gunmen were stopped at a police checkpoint at the bottom of the hill the president lived on, but they were allowed through on the instructions of the office of the chief of Haiti's national police, having falsely claimed to be U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration agents, Haiti expert Kevin Pina told I-24 News. The gunmen arrived in a convoy made up of five cars and were heard telling those inside the premises to put weapons down and, again, that they were from the DEA, according to footage cited by CBS News. President Moïse was killed inside his home while his wife, Martine, was badly injured. The New York Times reports she is now receiving treatment in a hospital in Florida. Haiti security forces have since killed four and detained two of a group of mercenaries, according to Leon Charles, chief of Haiti's national police, cited by the Miami Herald. In an interview with the New York Times, the country's interim prime minister, Claude Joseph, said that he was the one running the country at the moment. Hours after the assassination, Joseph declared martial law, and speculation has now begun about the identities of the assassins. In a news briefing reported on by the New York Times, Haiti's ambassador to the United States said Wednesday that the murder had been carried out by well-trained professionals, killers, commandos. Additionally, Interim Prime Minister Joseph told reporters some of the gunmen were speaking Spanish. However, after telling I-24 News that the chief of police had questions to answer regarding the decision to allow the gunmen access to the hill on which President Moïse lived, Haiti expert Kevin Pina speculated about the possibility of a coup. On Twitter, he wrote, Not one single police officer guarding the residence had a scratch. What does that tell you? More explicitly, he added, now being told heavily armed convoy carrying President's killers falsely identified itself as DEA at checkpoint at base of Laboule. Source and police says when they radioed for confirmation, they were told by PNH Chief Leon Charles' office to let them through to President's home. Tracking down a second source in Haiti, and if true, this is a coup. Pina did not speculate on those responsible for any possible coup, but Haiti's political situation has been tumultuous in recent years. President Moïse had been in power since February of 2017 and had recently seen demonstrations against him after trying to push through constitutional changes. Haiti's opposition had said the president's five-year term should have ended on February 7, 2021, five years after his predecessor stepped down. However, a delay to elections after his predecessor left office saw President Moïse insist he had one more year in power as he did not take office until February 7, 2017. On top of this, parliamentary elections should have been held in October of 2019, but were delayed by various disputes, meaning President Moïse had been ruling by decree. On the day the opposition wanted him to leave office this February, the president said an assassination attempt had been prevented. Where the country goes now after the successful assassination attempt is unclear. Speaking to The Guardian, Robert Fatten, a Haitian politics professor from the University of Virginia, said, According to the Haitian constitution, the interim president should be the chief justice. But the chief justice died of COVID last month, so there is no one obviously in charge. The identity of Haiti's prime minister is also unclear. President Moïse had been about to appoint a new prime minister on Wednesday after dismissing Claude Joseph in order to appoint neurosurgeon Ariel Henry to the post, according to the Miami Herald. Amid opposition party discontent with the appointment, President Moïse had said in a tweet that Henry's task was to form an open government capable of solving the glaring problem of insecurity and support the Provisional Electoral Council for the realization of general elections and the referendum. However, according to the Miami Herald, many in opposition were unhappy about the appointment because of a lack of formal consultation. In the end, it was the previous Prime Minister Joseph who announced Moïse's killing on Wednesday morning. Looking ahead, Fatten told The Guardian he could not rule out Haiti, which was subject to a controversial UN stabilization mission between 2004 and 2017. Facing another intervention of the country's security situation became unstable after the president's assassination. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.